Okay, morning guys. Saturday morning. Um, it's cold outside today. Down in the 30s last night. And we've had some snow in the hills in California. This is uh, not, uh, uh, this is very unusual for February. But we get it every now and then, so it's causing cold temperatures. Anyways, getting back to uh, part 5 of our uh, 38 short loading video. Um, today we are going to be test firing the uh, 158 grain round nose and a 213 grain round nose. Uh, two kinds of powders. Uh, one's going to be with 2.2 grains of red dot and the other is going to be three grains of a Lion Power Pistol. So what I have done to make some differences is I removed all these Smith & Wesson dies and replaced them with 9mm and 357 Magnum dies. This see here is an RCBS uh, sizing die decapper and here is a 9mm uh, flaring die and powder charge die uh, along with the uh, 9mm uh, case heating die, which worked out extremely well. So what I had to do though, I had to adjust the um, the height of the uh, expanding die to uh, match the .775 inch uh, shell. You know, as you know, uh, 9 millimeters are uh, 7.754. So I had to adjust it to uh, match up the, the <clears throat> size of the uh, shell. Um, I use a number 3, well it's actually a, a .30 diameter uh, charging hole for the uh, power disc and it threw out a perfectly 2.2 grains of red dot every time from the first to the last uh, round that I loaded. <clears throat> now for the uh, three grains of power pistol it w didn't work out that way. What happened was uh, the .30 is the lowest setting I have on these discs and it threw out a charge of 3.3 uh, .3 grains which is a little more than I wanted. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to mimic the old load that uh, Gun Sam uh, Roll Aficionado had loaded for me, well, had like test fired for me, and we were getting an average of uh, 500 to like up to 550 on the, you know, on the feet per second spread. So I want to see if that same charge with a shorter case will actually increase the velocity to closer to 600 feet per second. So we'll see with that, uh, having a <clears throat> smaller confined space, less airspace. This should give us a little bit more uh, pressure behind that bullet to send it out uh, at a good velocity. Anyways, <clears throat> I used the uh, Lee uh, Progressive 1000 to load this ammo up. And but what I didn't do though, I didn't prime it with the uh, Lee Progressive 1000. I used a hand primer like this one here. This one here I purchased like for 6 bucks like 15 years ago. Uh, it uh, really worked really well for me. It's plastic, but it's been it's less a long, long time. It's not like cheap plastic, it's like, like a, I don't know, composite type plastic, it's pretty hard, and they got a metal uh, insert on top. So basically what you do is you push your primer inside, grab your shell, leave it like that, and just press down on it like that. So what I did was, once I had it, the primer inside, put it back on the turret press, and then turned it up to the uh, primer and flaring and charging die, push it forward to uh, get that um, primer, you know, seated in a little bit more, and then uh, flare out the case uh, and drop the charge in, which came out perfectly. So the last uh, round that I had, I took it out, char uh, measured it on my uh, RCBS 750 scale, came out to 2.2. It was perfect. So with the 3.0 grains of Alliant uh, power pistol, I couldn't use the, uh, the 0 .30 disc. It was just too heavy of a charge. So basically I had to use my uh, RCBS uh, powder measure and just threw a charge in there and it worked out perfectly just as well so I'm not making a mass quantity I just made like less than 50 of these rounds just for test firing today you'd be test firing both with my arm score M206 uh, 38 special and my uh, Smith & Wesson 686-6357 Magnum so these are the guns I'll be using uh, I'll be using my um, <coughs> Cadwell chronograph we'll be setting up our target 5 yards away and not so much grouping for accuracy, but just making sure that I don't hit the uh, uh, the chronograph. Make sure it uh, uh, get uh, reduces as much air as possible. So to do that, basically what I had to do is you know you have to straighten out the target really straight, and you have to go back and, and check to see where your uh, point of aim is going to be, and you know your 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 uh, line of, your line of sight for your chronograph. You know it can't be crooked because what's going to happen is it'll pass through one beam. And, that, and miss the other beam so you'll get an error every time. You need to straighten up really straight to where you'll be shooting and 
hopefully both uh, the round will go both through the first and second beam, hit your target, of course, and get the proper reading. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, too, is that uh, um, I know that when we go to the ranges, we find a lot of uh, live ammo, and <clears throat> we're tempted to, like, you know, to shoot them and stuff. Unless you know for a fact it's factory loaded. I'm going to give you an example here. I found one on the ground, and it's a 9mm. Now, if you look close, it's crimped, heavily crimped. And the bullet doesn't even look like a copper bullet. It looks like a kind of like a copper wash, root beer color, something. You know, I don't even know if it's even metal or lead. But I'm going to take it apart and find out what it is. But if you look close, you'll see a heavy, heavy crimp on it. I mean, the person who loaded these up always doesn't realize that when you uh, load for straight wall cases, you're not supposed to put a roll crimp. It's not a revolver round. Uh, basically, your semi-automatic ammunition uh, supports on the uh, case mouth. Of the chamber of your uh, of your pistol, and that's how it gets its accuracy, not on the uh, rim like a revolver. But anyways, uh, later on, I'm gonna pump, punch it out, weigh it out, see what was inside of it. But uh, just to give you a little tip on uh, be, be aware of what you do. You know, you find out there in the range, it may look harmless to you, but uh, it could be a, a dangerous load. <laughs> you know, some probably double charged it, whatever, or put the wrong powder in, etc. And uh, that could be uh, disastrous to yourself and to your your weapon or anybody around you for that matter. Basically, you just got a live grenade on your on your miss there. But anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the uh, shoot, and then we'll come back and do the review. All right, stand by. All right, we're out here at the range this morning again, and we'll be shooting the uh, 686-6 today. We're not gonna be using the M206. All right, so I'll be using the 686, like I said. Uh, we're going to start out with the uh, 58 grain round nose. 2.2 grains of Alliance Red Dot. After that, 2.2 grains of Alliance Red Dot, 213 grain. And there, 158 grain, 3 grains of Power Pistol, and 3 grains of Power Pistol 42. All right, let's get started. So we're going to shoot 12 rounds of uh, 2.2 .2 grains of red dot and a uh, 158 grain round nose. Six oh four. Seven hundred. That's quite a spread. Five eighteen. Seven twenty six. Seven nineteen. Well, deviation was uh, not great on those. Let's try six more rounds and uh, see if we can get uh, better results with the uh, red. I was hoping this would be a little more tighter than the unique. Alright, we're going to load uh, six more. Okay. Alright, wrong bullets. Uh, one for the uh, 158 grinners. Alright, here we go. Six more with the uh, 158 grain, 2.2 grains of red dot. 723. 716. 698. Squib load. Squib load. One more shot. Seven oh two. All right. So four more of the six shots, and we're pretty consistent. So I guess I have to work on that load there for the red dot. All right. We're gonna try the uh, two twelve ring. All right. So we're gonna go two twelve ring, uh, bullet, and uh, two point two grains of red dot. Here we go. Six 
622. We're looking good, guys. We're looking good. 637. Outstanding. All right, one more round. 720, 621. Wow, guys. I'm liking this uh, 200 grain load. It seems to me that the heavy bullets just work every time. No matter what powder I use, the heavier bullets work better. I'm probably going to have to go with a uh, faster, much faster burning powder. Even go down to tight group or even double uh, A2 for that matter. All right, let's do uh, six more shots with the uh, 200, with a 2.2 uh, grains of uh, red dot. Load them up here. Two more to go. Oh boy. All right, we got an issue here, guys. All right, so one of my 202 graders got stuck and wouldn't go in all the way, so uh, I'm going to take it out. All right, let's uh, do five rounds. The, uh, 2.2 red dot. Two more to go. Oh, Six forty two. All right. That was good, guys. I like that load. The two point two grains of red dot uh, gave it that um, a velocity I'm looking for out of that two hundred grainer. It pretty much mimics the uh, thirty eight uh, super police. All right, we're going to try the uh, three grains of uh, red dot. I'm sorry, three grains of power pistol. All right, so three grains of uh, uh, Alliant power pistol, 158 grain red, red brown nut. Six shots. 696. 678. 615 645 609 620 All right, that was pretty really bad. That wasn't that wasn't too bad. All right, let's load six more rounds. And it's going to be three grains of uh, line power pistol. And uh, the line power pistol looked, looked like it, it worked pretty good for that, uh, that 158 grainer. Let's just have another set of six to see if it's not a fluke. All right, here we go. Six, oh, I'm sorry, 564. 727. 70. 711 665 714 That wasn't too bad, a little bit better than the last group I had. So uh, the power pistol looks promising for both loads. I like to do it in the 38 special case to see if it's any different. I'll probably do that in the next uh, test. All right, so uh, coming up next, guys, is a 212 grain, three grains of uh, power pistol. And right now I'm putting the cells back in the case here. All right, let's load up uh, 12, well, six rounds of 212 grain, 13 grain. All right. All right, so we're all loaded up. 213 grain Remington uh, 30 Remington 35 with uh, three grains of uh, power pistol. 608. 
629. 6.30. Looking good. 618. 5.81. 5.71. Not bad. Not bad at all. Alright, so we're going to do six more of the uh, 212 or 213 grainers. I'm pretty, I'm liking this power pistol load pretty good. All right, we're loaded up and six more of the uh, three grains of a uh, line power pistol and a 212, 13 grain bullet. Six fifty eights. Six six three, looking good. 637, outstanding. 642. 623. And 610. Guys, uh, the power pistol loads look really good. As you look at the accuracy, it's also extremely well as well. I mean, we're shooting at 5 yards, so that's not too bad. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to wrap it up, head on home, and uh, do a discuss and review on the uh, today's shoot. All right, so we're back from the range. And uh, I think for the most part, uh, I had like maybe one round that was um, stuck. It was a 213 grainer. This is kind of unusual. Uh, the 158 grain with the 2.2 .2 grains of red dot, I had some squibs on there. I'm not sure if it was caused by the uh, case sizing, uh, bad primers. I, I don't know which, but uh, I'm going to have to uh, take a look at these shells closely, make sure that uh, there's no splits in them or anything like that that causes any lack of pressure for the most part. But in the beginning, after loading them, I, I, I found there was nothing, is, no issue with the, the brass itself. Anyways, um, the uh, power pistol rounds fired extremely well and both the 158 and the 213 grain and so I was pretty elated with that too so uh, the the um, the 3.0 originally with a 38 special case fired between 500 and 530 550 right feet per second uh, when gun Sam real aficionado did his test on my load we use the same exact uh, grainage 3.0 and we used a shorter case. I don't have them with me now, but a shorter case. And uh, that shorter case added a lot of pressure to that three grains of uh, power pistol. And I was gaining extremely good velocities with it. 630, 640, 650. Some were a little below 610, you know, which is pretty good. Uh, I had a few that were in the 500 range. But uh, for the most part, uh, it was pretty consistent. And I was pretty elated with the results with that. Um, while I was at the range today, um, I, you saw uh, earlier I found one of these rounds, the 9mm, uh, the, in the range, right, with a heavy crimp. Well, today I go and I find there's like six more over there. I found these over there. And um, a couple of them have uh, squashed bullets in them and there there's no primer marks on them nothing it's like they threw them away so I'm gonna pop these out when I get time weigh them out find out what they're made of and then uh, go ahead and uh, get a review on that too and also while I was at the range I found uh, some more 30 special uh, nickel brass which is cool I can always use that and uh, for my next project which I'll be uh, making a video pretty soon all right so uh, I only fire the uh, Smith & Wesson uh, M206, I'm sorry, the, I, I deleted the M206 today, I figured why well, I uh, use two guns, uh, I wanted to test it with a 4 inch barrel anyways, so um, we've seen what they did last week, so it was uh, kind of mundane to repeat this, the same process over them, I wanted to use the 4 inch gun, so the 686 was uh, the better choice for that, and as you saw the velocities were extremely well. Um, the power pistol, again, I mean the power pistol, the red dot? Uh, I'm not sure what the problem was with I had a few squibs 
I'm not sure if it was the brass, but I'm going to take a look at it. Um, I may not use that powder anymore for the uh, test, but uh, the 2.2 2 uh, red dot worked actually pretty good for the 213 grinners. So I'll probably leave that alone and use that as a backup. Um, they, they did pretty good, actually, in the 600 uh, foot per second range. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is um, get our guns cleaned up. I think uh, today's shoot was uh, very successful. Uh, I told you that I do a, a video for uh, part five, and I did. Um, I'll probably make more of these little short cases, but I want to do another project. Uh, I want to do another project uh, involving 357 Magnum and a 38 Special, and uh, I'll let you uh, in on that here uh, shortly. But for now, uh, please rate, subscribe, and make comments, please. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your weekend. Take care now.